is um, since we're talking about worship, you often speak about idols, right? Mm -hmm. Because we speak about idol worship. Mm -hmm. and, and I often share this with Christians because a lot of Christians don't notice this. Do not notice this you know like i would have a christian when i would talk to them and be like you know i visited that person's house they had an idol i felt so uncomfortable i'm like cool all right i want to share with you a verse all right and and this is ezekiel 14 um verse 1 to 5. now some of the elders of israel came to me and sat before me and the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the catch there. And put before them that which causes them to stumble into iniquity. Should I let myself be inquired at all uh, by them? Therefore speak to them and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Everyone of the house of Israel who sets up his idols in his heart, and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity and then comes to the prophet i the lord will answer him who comes according to the multitude of his idols that i may seize the house of israel by their heart mm -hmm. because they are, they are all estranged from me by their idols and i mentioned that i'm like if that makes you comfortable what about the idols of the heart yeah. Because these idols are more deceptive than your common idol that you would see on a shelf, right? Mm -hmm. Or say in a temple, right? If, mm -hmm. if you're going to go past a temple, you might see a lot of idols there. And sometimes we have this spirit where we're going to criticize that. Like, oh, how could you worship an idol, right? You're in the 21st century. How could you do that? But then God also shares that we can also have an idol in our hearts, if God is not number one in our heart, then whatever is taking that place is our idol. Amen. And God is actually rebuking his own people. Yeah. Notice here, this is the Israelites. So even Christians, we think that we're immune of having idols in our hearts. And that's, that's not true. We as a temple of God, we get to either have a decision to say, God, I want to surrender everything to you and you are the only God in my life. Yeah. Or I'll be like, you know what, God, I'll give you this nice temple, but I'm going to leave this little room for my little oh, my idol. idol, right? Please, God, you can have the rest of my life, but don't touch that area. And that's something that requires us to say, I do need to surrender. Yeah. I need to give it all. It's hard, right? The certain sins, as, as we read now, that these idols make you stumble in iniquity, right? Yeah. So it makes you go back to your sins. But if we let go of the sins, then these idols have no hold on us. And therefore, they have no place in our hearts. Mm. That, that's, that's, what, that's my thought with this. Yeah. I, I think you touched on a very important point there. It's... um. I think before it was uh it was there was less temptation to have many idols in the, in the life at that time uh, of course they still did but um now it's there's so much stuff to distract us from god true it's true. so much distractions and it's and 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 it's sneaky the devil the devil's had many years to um exactly two thousand years to uh improve his uh <laughs> his tactics he's getting better at it he's getting better <laughs> at it and he's putting in less effort less and less effort and uh we're making it easy for him um the problem is i think the church sometimes as a whole kind of is more passive towards these things to these idols they're less against it compared to before um they're more lax with the way they see idol worship uh and i think we've become lax too and we've been kind of relaxed a bit mm. in uh in our worship of god and our daily devotional life uh would, would would you say that it's just obviously not taking your faith seriously would would, would that be would you say that's the reason it's not just just that unfortunately i think it goes deeper than that I, th I think it's taking your whole purpose 
your whole purpose is, is why am I on earth? Not seriously. It's almost like you see this as an afterthought. Your your everything, the, the spiritual aspect of your life, is an afterthought, and the only thing that matters is the physical. Oh, I, yeah. I think I think I see that, and and because I'm not speaking on of you know outside influence. I'm talking about my own personal life as well. I've I've, I've been there. Mm. I've been. There. It's when God has become an afterthought, and my own personal life has been at the forefront of my life. And you see that in the way I lived at that time. You see that in, in my fruits. You could see that in everything. You could. It's unfortunate, but um, I think a lot of Christians are going through that. And I see that in their life by their, by their fruits. You can see it. Uh, they're not living for Christ. They're living for themselves. And eventually they put up an idol of themselves and they worship it. Yeah. So it's basically like prioritizing and saying, God, there's like a fifth spot. It's empty. The moment will slot you in, and then yeah. bit by bit, it just goes down the ladder. So, so it's, and then yeah. you start to look at your life, and you're like, "Hold on, where, where is God in my life?" Yeah. It's kind of the opposite of what you said. We're having a room where God's there in a little corner for the idol. No, it's the other way around, unfortunately. <laughs> um, it's like a little room for guys. Like God, you could take control of my life, like but this statue, is the room. Huge yeah. statue of yourself and a little statue of, <laughs> of yeah. uh, or just a Bible there, you know, a little tiny Bible in the corner somewhere. Yeah. I, if if there's space. Yeah, true, true. <laughs>